Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Quantum Mailbag. In this video, we're going to talk about the IV measurement variance that you sometimes see in Quantum's tools. Specifically, a common question that comes up is, why don't the implied volatility numbers ever match for puts and calls at the same strike? Shouldn't that be guaranteed by put call parity? And the short answer is yes, it should be guaranteed. But from a practical perspective, it doesn't usually work out that way. And since our implied volatilities use usually go down to a level of hundredths of a percent in order to be able to provide as much accuracy as possible and precision, you'll pretty much never see the values actually match up. And that's a that's really a function of the fact that we have to deal with increments of at least one penny for bids and asks. So as a result, you're going to see a lot of numbers that aren't perfectly aligned, even though the underlying option theory would indicate they probably should be closer than that. It just doesn't work out that way in a practical application. So this leads into the next question, which is invariably, how do I make money, right? Is there an arbitrage play here? And the short answer is no, there's there's no arbitrage play. Generally in options, there's no arbitrage, uh, especially not for retail or self-directed investors or anybody who's doing anything manually. Uh, even in the case of automated trading, it's virtually impossible to make money off of a true arbitrage scenario. However, that doesn't mean we can't give ourselves and in, ourselves increased odds on trades we're making because we're using the math to our advantage and we're recognizing when things are potentially overpriced. And that is something we're going to be able to talk about a little bit here. So let's talk about Apple. And the reason we're picking Apple here is because it's over a weekend. And the nice thing about Apple is that it closed the week. If we take a look at the implied volatility by strike chart, it closed the week at 152.55, which is perfect for us because there is an option that strikes that that expires next week struck at 152.50. So that is effectively as close to at the money as we can get. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that this is not a beautiful, smooth option skew like you'd like to see it. You know, the old volatility smile that looks like a perfectly rounded curve. And that's because this is what a, a real skew often does look like, especially after hours when the bid ask spreads widen out a little bit. And it gets a little even messier when we add in the put actuals, because you'll notice the put actuals are all a little bit above the call actuals for the most part. And uh, this also, again, not that pretty of a curve. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of wiggle room that comes into the bid ask spread after hours. So if we step over to Apple and I'm going to pick the current week and we're going to look at the option chain. And I'm also going to change the view to look at the straddle at the money. This gives us the ability to look at calls and puts side by side. And we want to take a look at this 152.50 strike. Now, this strike here is interesting because that 204, 205 spread on the bid ask for calls is as tight as we could possibly get. So if you've watched the our mailbag video about how we do implied volatility calculations, you'll know that we can't get any tighter than a one penny spread, which means that we're going to take the midpoint here. So that 204 and a half will be the price that we use as the fair market price of the option, which is reasonable given that the, the market disagrees about whether or not you could sell for 204 or buy for 205. And we get this 25.14 implied volatility. So we'll assume for now that that's like the correct implied volatility for the market. That's great, but when we go over to the put side, we see 2593, which is 79 basis points above that, which is which is a lot of room, right? That's almost a full percentage point higher, which you ordinarily wouldn't expect to see when you have something with this great option liquidity as Apple has. But the reason for that is simply because there is this big spread. And now just with a little bit of experience, what you'll be able to do is notice from this, when you know that this 2514 is probably like the correct ish option price, when you see a higher implied volatility for the put, it's going to tell you that the market believes that you should be paying more for these put options, that at least that's what they're willing to pay more for them. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean it is a, uh, a bearish play. It just means that the expectation relative to the bid ask being offered here is that um, the, the fair value for it should be lower. So if we switch over and we take a look at the standard view at the money, this will give us more fields. And we can see this 191, 197 bid ask spread for the 152 and a half put. And if we slide down, we can see the estimated value, which is like the fair market value that's calculated for this, which means we took the index implied volatility for Apple for this term. Again, we cover this in more depth in another video, which we recommend you check out first, is 191. And since the midpoint here is 194, that means we should expect to see a higher implied volatility here for the put. 
Now, it doesn't mean that it's worth the higher implied volatility. It just means that that's what the market is telling us they're willing to pay. And so that's really what we want to care about, right? Our tools are not designed to tell you what something is necessarily worth as much as what the market is pricing it as. So you can make the decision as an investor whether you think the market is right or wrong. Because one of the challenges, of course, in options is always you don't just have to be right about the direction and the magnitude of the timing. You also have to be more right than the market is because sometimes everything's priced to perfection and you have to pick a side. And so when you pick that side, is that side worth the return you can get? So in this particular case, that's the explanation as to why the implied volatility is different. Now, if you happen to think that the implied volatility should be higher for Apple, then it might make sense to go out and to buy some of these lower priced, relatively speaking, calls and then hedge it out in some way. Or if you think that the implied volatility is overpriced right now, you can come in and you could sell these puts. And of course, there's a bunch of different complicated and you know mitigating factors that come into where you want to put the different kinds of hedging and the cost of hedging and so forth. So you might decide there's no opportunity here, but this is the reason why you will see the option pricing, or at least the implied volatility, not necessarily match up between puts and calls. It has very much to do with the way that the bid ask spreads are done and the way that the calculations are done for option pricing for Quantia. So if you have any other questions, please go ahead and submit them to hello at quantia.com. And of course, you can leave things out for us on Reddit or Twitter or other places. And as always, good luck and good hunting.